Okay, it's going to be a quick tutorial on how to start the game. And I'm going to start off by showing you the equipment that you'll be using when we start it up. And so let's get ready to go. Okay, I'm, first I want to talk about the uh, various pieces of hardware and equipment you'll be using to set up the game. Uh, it'll be located either in the computer case, which I'm showing here, or it will be located in the uh, bridge mate case. Now, one thing I wanted to point out in the computer case, in the little side compartment, I keep batteries. And those batteries are for the bridge mates. Uh, if they batteries die on them and the machine dies, uh, you can find the batteries for them right there. If we look in the Bridgemate case, there are a number of pieces of hardware that you, you know about and uh, will need. One is the, of course, the money pouch where we keep all the money right there. Second is uh, the clipboard that you use to register people. And then we also have in there the uh, sheets that folks use, the sheets that, that folks use to um, uh, record their scores at the game. Over in the side, we have extra pencils. We have an extra set of cards, if you should ever need them, for the uh, bid boxes. Also, we have extra cards in case we need to replace a set of cards uh, in a board. Very unlikely. We also have cards that go in the bid boxes, and they're over here. Okay, the, one of the key things that we have in here that we're gonna need is our server. Server is this little box right here. It's for the bridge mates, and it, connects, this is the server, it connects the uh, computer to the little handheld bridge mates via a USB printer cable that looks kind of like that. The USB on one end, printer on the other. And the uh, printer part plugs in to the end of this bad boy right there. And I will do that right now. Get it out. Plug that in. Now I'm ready to put the uh, now I'm ready to put the Bridgemate server into the computer. The other thing I keep here is a listing of all of the players that typically come to play. And it has their names, it has their phone numbers, and it has their player numbers. A lot of times players will forget their numbers and you have to tell them what they are. The other two things you need to be aware of is our table cards. Now we have two sets of table cards. One set is for how movement, and the other set is for a Mitchell movement. If we have five tables or more, we use the Mitchell cards. If we have less than five tables, we'll use the cards in the Hal packet. The only other pieces of hardware that we need now are the computer, a mouse and a pad, and of course our handy dandy charger for the computer. We want to make sure that we don't run out of battery uh, at the end of the day. There's one other cable that we need. Okay, the other cable that we need is an HDMI cable. HDMI cable is used to connect to the computer to the television set for the overhead display of the timer. 
You'll notice an HDMI cable is a little different from a USB cable in that it's more of a polygon or more triangular in the connection and the connector is bigger than a USB cable. If we compare the two, we can see that a USB cable is pretty much square. That's all there is to it. Whereas an HDMI cable has a little more character to it. Now, what I have done is string the <coughs> television cable directly from the television and it will be hanging down and you will see it hanging down and uh, all we need to do we get ready is plug it into the computer and where do you plug it you ask well if we look at the computer that we're using on the side you can see several connection points this is for a uh, SD card there are two USB ports and there is a uh, HDMI port and you can tell it because it's got the little triangular edges on it also there's a uh, very old <laughs> uh, port for the telephone so what I'm gonna do right now is just plug this bad boy in and I've plugged in my HDMI cable the next thing I want to plug in is the server and this is the bridgemate server it's going to connect to our, our handheld bridgemate and it uses a little different kind of a cable end it's a USB cable again if we look at our handy dandy computer you'll notice the uh, two USB ports and I'll plug it into one of those Okay, now we have our server and our connection to the TV plugged in. One other thing we need to plug in is our mouse. That's our mouse. And, and our mouse uses a USB port, just like this one. And we'll plug it into the second USB port. There we go. So now we're all hooked up with that. And all we really need to do now is hook up our power supply. And our power supply plugs in to the other side into a port right here. And the other side of this bad boy plugs into the wall, just standard. AC plug and I'll plug that in okay one last piece of equipment that I want to talk about just for a second is the remote that controls the TV now I'm using a uh, pretty much uh, standard Comcast remote programmed up for our particular TV and it looks kind of like that you'll find it in the computer bag okay I want to take just a second to look at the computer before we start it up there are some keys that we're going to need to use, and uh, the F keys are located at the top. Now, I've had to mark these on my computer as, uh, for instance, F8 uh, would be this key right here with the 8, because they don't show up on the keyboard, so they're marked up at the top. Also need to be aware of the function key that's the fn key right here we're going to use that a little later to direct the screen output to our tv we're going to hold down this key and we're going to hold down this key right here the f what would be the f4 key when you hold the function key down it will 
bring up a selection that lets us uh, put the TV screen on the computer. We power up by hitting this key right here. And then the computer will whirl and jig and eventually come up. Tell us we're starting Windows. Tick, tick, tick. Okay, when it eventually gets around to starting up, you'll see two little boxes, one label Bob and Win and one label Katie Bridge. Don't want the Bob and Win. You do, however, want the Katie Bridge. And so I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna welcome me and boom, we're into our program. Okay, after we've turned on our computer and we've hooked it up to the TV, uh, we should have the screen on the TV on the uh, screen on the computer the same as the screen on the TV. Now, if it's not, make sure that the television has the computer hooked to its uh, HDMI port 2, and that's selected. And that's going to be standard for salt and pepper. You shouldn't have to change it. But one thing you may have to do in order to get it to come up on the screen is select the proper output of the computer. And you do that with a couple of keys down here. One is the function key. That says FN right there. And the other is the screen key. You see that one underneath four? That's the screen key. So in order to switch the screen so that it shows on both the computer and the TV, we're going to hold down the F key with one finger and we're going to push the F4 key. Now you see it pops up with some options. So we're going to arrow over to one that says duplicate. We want it on both and we're going to hit return. It's going to go blank. And then suddenly you'll see that the screen on the TV and the screen on the computer are the same. So that's the way we get the screen up. Thank you. Bye. All right, this is going to be a short tutorial on how to set up the uh, BridgeMate software. Actually, the score program that runs our game. Look on your desktop, you'll find this little uh, blue circle with a spade inside of it. It says ACBL score. That's the first thing we're going to do. After we're going to go over here where it says shortcut to timers, we're going to set our timer. Those are the two things we need to start the game. So the thing is go click on my score and it like so. In the entry screen, and I'm going to go over here to game and click on game. So now I brought up my screen and I want to start a new game. So I'm going to click on the game button. It's right here. And game button opens up. And it says, well, golly gee whiz, what do you want the file name to be? And it always allocates the date. And you'll see that this is 18 for 2018, 08 for the 8th month, and 17 for the 17th day. Uh, and we always have afternoon games. Even though it says morning here, I have to change that to afternoon or it won't uh, let me put it in correctly. So I change that to afternoon. Now it says, is it okay to start a new game? Yes, it is. That's what we want to do. I'm going to make this all the way open so I can see what I'm doing. And now if you look in the lower left-hand corner, there are a number of commands it tells you. And one of them is Control-A, Add a Section. Add a Section simply means we're going to start a new game. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hold the Control key down and hold the A. Okay, it wants to know what type of game. Well, it's always a pair game. Uh, we don't do Swiss or any of that other jazz. We always do pairs. So just say OK to pair. Wants to know the letter for the section. We only have one section, so we always use A. It wants to know the color. Doesn't really matter, but I always use white. 
wants to know what type. Now, if we have five tables or more, we'll use a Mitchell. If we have less than five tables, we'll use a Hal. And I will show you in a minute how we can reset. Uh, let's, let's say the registrar tells us we've got five tables and somebody doesn't show up and we only have four and a half. Well, we've set up for Mitchell. We need to go reset for a Hal. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and set it up for Mitchell. And my registrar has told me we have five tables. So it says number of tables. I'll say five. And it automatically calculates the played rounds will be five. It's okay. And the number of boards per round will be five. Okay. And we're going to use a standard Mitchell. Nothing, uh, nothing crazy. Okay. We're not going to have any player duplication, so we just say, okay, phantom pairs. Well, phantom pairs exist when you have a half a table. Uh, we don't have half a tables, so I would normally say no. But I'm going to say yes in this case just to show you how this goes. If I say yes, and and any time you have a half table, you're going to have a phantom pair. So if you have six and a half, seven and a half, whatever, you will have a phantom pair. I'm going to say yes. It wants to know where the phantom is. Now we could place the phantom north, south, or east, west. If we place the phantom east, west, it will roll through the game. It will go from table to table in each session. So we normally put it north, south, because north, south doesn't move. The phantom doesn't move, and it's a little bit simpler for everyone. What table? Well, I always put the phantom at the last table. It uh, doesn't have to be, but that seems to work out the best. Pickup sequence, it wants to know. Well, that's by table numbers. It's already set up. We'll say OK. Do we want to use the remote server for score entry? Well, yes, we do. <clears throat> do we want club master points? Yes, we do. And it comes up and it tells you what club that uh, where we are. And so you just say okay to that because that is in fact our club number. And it is weekly session 14. That's good. So we just say okay. And it's an open game. So we say okay to that. Stratified. Um, you can just say not stratified if you like. I generally make it stratified with the first strat being open. That means the A players can have as many points as they want. Say OK to that. The second strat is 200 points. That means everybody in the B section will have 200 points or less. Say OK to that. Wants to know, is this a newcomer game? Well. No, it's not a newcomer game, so we say no. Is this a flighted game? No, it's not flighted either. Just say no. And now it wants the event name, which I would usually say salt and pepper, because that's where we're holding the game. And the rest of it is all filled in for you, and you just say OK. All right, now uh, we have everything ready to rock and roll. Uh, the one thing we need to do is start is start our server. Now it's very important that we start the server. If you'll look down at the bottom of the screen, it shows you start after all sections are configured. And the way you do that is you hit F11, and then you go down and find BMS in the command list. BMS is located close to the bottom, but we want to start our server for the beginning of the session. So we'll highlight it, and then uh, we'll just hit return, and that should start our server, and we're off and running. At that point, we're ready to uh, play. All we need to do is start playing at this point. Now, let's assume that uh, the registrar comes back and says, hey Bob, 
or hey, Mr. Director, we don't have five tables. We only have four and a half. We have to do a how movement. Well, what do I do? Do I have to start all over again? Well, the answer is no. No, you really don't, Bob. What you do is we're going to reset the parameters. And there's a handy little tool for doing that. Uh, and that tool is F9. It's a secret secret tool that only a few of us know about, but I'm going to let you in on it. If you hit F9, it brings up a bunch of options, and one of them down here is to change the uh, movement. There it is. See number five? Change the movement parameters. So if I click on that and say OK, it says, hey, you're about to change the parameters. Please confirm. So yes. And it tells me that any scores that may have been posted will not be retained. Well, surely none have been because we haven't started things yet. Okay, so now I want to know what movement I want to select. We're starting back from there. This time I'm going to say I want a howl movement. Say okay. And the number of tables. Again, it's going to be five tables. Maximum number of played rounds. Now you see that changes for a how. Now they're saying there are five, uh, nine played rounds because their how movement things change differently as per the card. But you have a lot more rounds. Okay. Uh, now it wants to know whether we're using an alternate or a standard set of cards. And we always use standard, so don't use alternate, just use standard. And you can tell that our table cards are standard because it says right here, starting pairs at table 2 is 5 north versus 2 east. So check that on table 2 on the card and it will make sure that you're in the right uh, standard mode. So I say OK to that. Is you're about to change the 510 default. Okay, that's fine. I want to. Uh, number of boards now will be three. We're going to have nine rounds of three boards. That's 27 total because it's a how movement. Okay. Phantom pairs. No, there's no phantoms. Boom. So now everything has changed and we're now in a how movement. And uh, we just start off and start playing. Now, after the game is complete, or really any time during the game, but certainly at the end of the game, we need to download the names and the uh, scores. Now, to do that, we use F11, and we go down to the bottom of the list, and you see an option, Post Names from the Remote. We're going to click on that and say OK. Now, I didn't get any names because nobody's put any in. <laughs> this is just a demo. But normally, it would have all the names posted if they're all put in. The other thing we can do is get the scores. And we can do that, again, F11. Go all the way down. Post scores from the remote. Say OK. And no scores are posted because nobody put any in. But normally they would put them in. And you have to do that scores uh, and names at the end of the game to make sure all the names are in and all the scores are posted. Now, there's some handy dandy little shortcuts so that you don't have to go through that F11 stuff. If you look at the bottom of the screen, it will tell you uh, a couple of F keys. For instance, F... Uh, A control P, which it doesn't show there, <laughs> but control P is a secret code. And what control P does is it brings all the scores in from the remote. So if I hold down control and then hit P, it posts the scores. Also, if uh, you want to just take a look at 
at uh, how things stand, you can do an F8. F8. Again, that's not listed down there, but I'm telling you about it. It's a secret uh, directors only know command. And if we want to look at them on the screen, and I'll say okay. By rank, that's fine. And it tells us then how everybody's doing. It puts their names out so you can see their names and so on. Now, of course, we're not, we don't have a game going here. So, it doesn't really show us very much. All right, when we're done, we've done everything, game's over, everyone's gone home. Then we want to uh, save what we've done. And we do that, we hit F11. And we go down to L-R-E-C-A, Recap. Click on that, hit Return. And once we want to put it in a text file, and it will give it a name. The text file that we want to put it in will normally be set up. I'm going to set it up now, and it will be the ACBL one. Let me go find it. Go up. Uh, my computer. Come on, open up. Well, I'll just put it in documents. That's okay. So we'll say save. And it wants list and recap. Yes. 120 characters. Yes. By rank. And now it's saved. It. So now you can, uh, you can go away. You've done it. You've done everything you need to do and you can shut down. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to close it out and I'm done. Okay, now I want to show you how we start our timers. If you look on your screen, you'll see uh, a little folder here called Shortcut to Timers. And so what you want to do to start that is click on it and it will bring up. Now, uh, the time all Mitchell timers. There's a set in the How folder as well, but I'll just show you the Mitchell. So I've got, uh, oh, let's say I've got six tables, um, six tables even selected. And so I'll click, double click on the six tables, and it brings up my seven no trump bridge timer, by, my seven no trump bridge timer by Bob Lee. And it's going to look pretty much just about like this. Welcome, everybody. Turn off those cell phones and start your play.